Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. Welcome to our live Dean One podcast, our second podcast. My name is Mahtasa Ibrahim. Uh, and today, inshallah, we'll be discussing uh, Ramadan 2020, reviving the basics. But before we start, I want to ask one of our brothers here, Asad, to uh, begin with the recitation of the Quran. Uh, Asad, go ahead. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم And for the translation of the meaning of the Quran The month of Ramadan is the one in which the Quran was revealed as guidance for mankind and as clear signs that show the right way and distinguish between right and wrong. So those of you who witness the month must fast in it, but the one who is sick or is on a journey should fast as much from other days as he missed. Allah intends to provide ease for you and does not intend to create hardship for you. All this is so that you may complete the number of fasts as prescribed and proclaim the takbir of Allah for, for having guided you, and so that you may be grateful. Jazakallah khair uh, to both of you for the recitation of the Quran and the translation of the meaning. Uh, once again, just to all of our viewers, I want to say assalamu alaikum, Jazakallah khair for joining us today. Um, with me here, I have uh, Hudayfa, Musab, Malik, um, Hafid, Shams, and Asad, who you guys just heard. And inshallah, towards the end, we'll have Dr. Jadid uh, with some concluding points. Assalamu alaikum, guys. How are you guys doing? How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing good. Good to have you guys here. Um, so as we know, and as, as I mentioned before, inshallah, today we're going to be discussing uh, Ramadan 2020. And, um, you know, the, the, the situation that we're in right now um, is very different than it has been in the previous uh, Ramadans. Uh, you know, this pandemic has changed our lifestyle. Um, and it's changed the habits of everybody. Um, and you know, life isn't the same. Something as simple as going to the grocery store has become, um, you know, challenging. Uh, so, you know, as we all know, the masajids have been closed down, so we can't go to normal prayers or Jum'ah. Um, and, you know, we won't be able to go to the masjid during Ramadan. So a lot of people, including myself and everybody here, because this is so different for us, you know, we're uncertain of how to treat this Ramadan compared to how we've treated uh, past Ramadans, you know. Um, we, some of us might have a feeling of, you know, because the massages are closed down, we're not going to have the same type of, you could say, Ramadan atmosphere as we've had in the previous Ramadan. So, inshallah, throughout this uh, podcast, we'll look to discuss these points to clarify some uh, misconceptions that some of us may have and to advise both um us and inshallah some of our viewers. Um, and with the first um, question, or just the first person I want to involve is um, uh, just everybody. I want to ask this uh, as an open question, but um, just describe some of the things you guys like about Ramadan. I, I'll start with myself, um, but I mean, with me, when I think of Ramadan, I think of you know those times that you spent in the masjid. Um, uh, you know, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, 
those long nights that you, that you uh, spend standing, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hanging out with friends in the masjid or having family over. That's just some of the things that, um, you know, I get reminded of when we talk about Ramadan. Um, um, I know me personally, um, I, I love that um, in Ramadan, our family gets together, um, you know, for suhoor, for iftar. Uh, we get together, open our, open our fast, close our fast. Uh, something I look forward to, you know, whether it's hosting, hosting an iftar, um, going to someone else's place for an iftar, uh, even at the masjid. It's something I really look forward to. I associate with Ramadan. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's kind of funny with my family, you know, when, when we're in the morning, we get a little groggy um, for suhoor. But it's something, something I look forward to. For it's, part, it's part of the Ramadan that I associate with, for sure. Mm. Anyone else have anything to add on to me? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Hudayfa, I agree with you. Uh, but what I also want to add on my favorite part of Ramadan is the tarawih prayers in the masjid and the tahajjud in the masjid and the atikaf. And especially, I like it when you, with you're with the community, you pray tarawih, and then right after you see your friends, and then you discuss, you, you talk with them, and then you play basketball or such. And it's just like this community atmosphere. That's kind of what my favorite thing about Ramadan is. And I'll jump in real quick and say, on top of just Ramadan, there's also Eid at the end after after we finish Ramadan. It's always a great experience when we spend time with our family, with our friends. It's great to interact with the community when we go to Salat al Eid. So it's just memorable experiences. It's great to great to enjoy. Yeah, and I think just something that I'm hearing from all of us that's kind of similar is that um, you know we we all enjoy the social aspect of Ramadan, and I think at the end of the day we all realize that this Ramadan is not going to be the same as it was, uh, you know, compared to previous Ramadans. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, as Muslims, just a message to all of us is that, you know, we have to remain consistent, whether we're in a time of ease or hardship. So, you know, despite the messages being closed, we still have to maintain the same level of, you know, ibadah that we had, um, you know, last Ramadan or Ramadan before that. Just because the messages are closed, doesn't mean that, you know, we can't uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stand up all night or read Quran and that kind of stuff. So um, just a reminder, but uh, to move on to um, our next point, um, Malik, um, you know, with our whole COVID-19 reality, some are saying, and I mentioned this a little bit before, that Ramadan will be a little bit different or maybe a little bit diminished as it has been compared to previous years. Uh, what's your take on that? So, uh, if I'm understanding your question correctly, that Ramadan, some people believe that Ramadan will be diminished because of this COVID-19, because we're in quarantine, and how is this year going to be different? Well, the, in order to answer that question, I kind of want to differentiate between the required commandments of Allah SWT in the Sharia regarding Ramadan, and then just the customs that we've built up as a, in the cultures that, we've, that, we're, that we're involved in. So what's the difference between a uh, required command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the customs? Well, in general, a uh, required command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that comes from the Quran, that comes from the Sunnah. And it's basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you have to do this and so you must do it. And Allah and the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wrote these commandments and, there, and we have to go through them. And that's regardless of whatever, whatever situation we may be in. Now, in regards to customs, there are things that just that we've developed, that we've just added on to it, on to the actual uh, commandments that we've been told by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. For example, uh, flashback to the Sahaba when they were uh, tarawih was also off, was offered at the masjid and at home, so it didn't necessarily have to be only done at the masjid. It can be done at home as well. And uh, tahajjud can can also be performed at home. It didn't have to be solely in the masjid and there's also there's a lot of times where the customs that we do affect us and take us take us away from the ibadah from from ramadan we know at times when the families have spent almost half a day preparing for an iftar party while well but instead of that we could have been devoting time for the quran we could have devoted time reading the quran we could have devoted time something for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sometimes our mothers and sisters stay up most of the night to prepare the suhoor rather than doing the ibadah, which is the, essentially the most important part of Ramadan. So I hear that the point that you're trying to make is that, um, you know, while, you know, 
doing that extra stuff is not bad. Sometimes people might focus too much on that compared to, um, you know, what we, sh what we should be focusing a lot of our time on, for example, Ibadah and reading the Quran and stuff like that. Am I right, Madhav? Yeah, you're right. Okay, cool. So yeah, you do make the point of, you know, we should be focusing on this Ramadan. Um, instead of focusing on, uh, you know, we might be moving from something abnormal to normal, meaning, um, you know, us not having the masajid uh, to us having used to have the, uh, how can I say this? We used to have the masajid to go to during Ramadan uh, and now we don't. So some people might treat it as, you know, this is abnormal, but in reality, we are going from, we are going back to the normal. I guess that's a right way to say it. Uh, um, but anyways, moving on to the next point. Um, and I want to ask our uh, this, uh, the brothers that started us off, uh, Shams and Asad. Um, um, both of you guys are memorizers of the Quran. And, um, you know, when it comes to Ramadan, perhaps the biggest thing that I remember or that I could think of is the Taraweeh prayers. So as people that have memorized the Quran um, and people that lead the Salah, um, how do you guys oh, just explain what tarawih prayers are to maybe those that don't understand uh, what it is? All right, Jazakallah khair. Um, this morning, what exactly tarawih prayers are? Tarawih prayers is an act that is performed every night during Ramadan, where all the Muslims come together and pray together behind one leader. You should read like two rakah at a time, but there are different opinions on whether you should read eight or 20. But what you should know is the more you read, the more reward you will see from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And coming from where Rawi started implementing in Islam and how it became such a big thing today, well, during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr wa anhu, it was called Qiyam al prayers, where being performed individually and this continued until the beginning of Umar wa ta'ala anhu's khalifat. Upon the order of Umar wa ta'ala anhu, the prayers were started to be performed in a congregation led by Ubay bin Khubbab. The prayer is considered a nafil prayer, done two rakah at a time. It can be done in congregation or individually. There's no requirement that the entire Quran be completed in Tarawih. So well. Yeah, well, you know, when I think about leading the Tarawih prayers, as a person who has not memorized the whole Quran, uh, you know, when I look at the people that lead the prayer, sometimes if I were to imagine myself in that situation, I would you know, be a little bit nervous because you have, um, you know, sometimes you might have tens of people, hundreds of people, sometimes even thousands of people behind you, you know. So, um, and, you know, sometimes the imam gets corrected and all this kind of stuff. So, in a sense, while there is a lot of reward associated with, uh, you know, leading prayer, and it's a very big honor to do that, at the same time, uh, there is a little bit pressure. So, what do you guys do to prepare for uh, leading prayer? Uh, um, I said he's good. So first off, a hafiz continues to read the Quran as much as possible throughout the years. Throughout the year, to revising ha happens basically every day of the year. At minimum, at minimum, we read one juz a day to keep us always prepared. This is so we always have the Quran with us and and are able to recite it in the best manner. Exactly. And you know, uh, one thing too is um, while we're on the topic of, you know, spending time at home, I know that Hubeifa touched base about this a little bit. Um, you know, we can take advantage of uh, performing Salat Taraweeh at home. Uh, so Asad, what are some uh, like techniques that we could use uh, to lead our families and uh, Salat Taraweeh prayer at home? Well, first and foremost, Try and memorize the Quran as much as possible in this month so it can be read in Tarawih prayers as well as benefit us throughout the year. Also, take the time during the day and night and read and contemplate the message of the Quran. It's really important we read the obscure to help us understand the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us in the Quran. As far as reciting during Tarawih, prayers when you don't have the surah memorized. There are valid opinions about holding the Quran and reading 
and placing it down in a safe place when you go into Raku and Sujood. If you carry this opinion, you can perform the prayer with the Quran in hand. Also, it's also acceptable to read and repeat only the surahs that you know, but contemplate deeply into the meaning of the surah for understanding and implementing. Zagla. Zagla, uh, I think I might be having some uh, technical difficulties from my end. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, yeah you're good. I hear you fine. You're fine now. Yeah. Did you guys hear me all right, or is everything good? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. Checking out before I move on with anything. You guys can hear me all right? Yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, no, okay, you're good. Cool. All right, just double checking. But anyways, um, I, I did hear a lot about what you guys said. And I think the biggest takeaway is uh, to prepare um, beforehand before you lead the prayer. So, you know, uh, even though somebody might not be a happy, like, for example, myself, um, just to prepare, for example, let's say 30th juice. Um, you know, prepare beforehand, and when we go on leave, inshallah, everything uh, will be will go smoothly. Um, but to move on to our uh, next point, uh, Hudayfa, uh, during this time that we're in, um, you know, while we're at home and we don't have the mess messages to go to, um, and that sort of thing, how can we maximize our um, opportunity? No, sure. Jazakallah khair, Mokasim, for the question. Um, to really begin answering this question, you know, we must first be um, be reminded of what our main purpose in life is, you know, um, and that is to praise Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then to uh, ultimately achieve our goal of eternal paradise. You know, that's what that's what we're created for, um, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next, um, you want to be reminded that this month is only coming around once a year. Um, you know, to, we must take advantage, you know, make the best of our situation, you know, although um, our circumstances, circumstances this year might not um, you know, align with what we're previously used to, um, let this not affect our ibadah because that's what we're ultimately, cre ultimately created with. Um, and then it's also, you know, very important to not get lazy during this time, you know, just because we're locked up. I um, mean, it's also a reminder, you know, shaitan's also locked up. Um, so, you know, we can still make the best of this month. Um, and just to kind of re reinforce uh, the, dra the drastic graveness, importance of this month, um, we can look back to the past. Uh, the Muslims, you know, they found some of their greatest achievements during this month. Um, you know, just to name name a few, uh, that the Battle of Badr. Uh, it's one of the most historic events in Islamic history. Uh, it's fought and won during this month. Um, second, you know, you can look at you can look at Salahuddin. Um, he liberated Jerusalem during this month from the cr Crusaders. And, you know, this month was blessed by Allah. You know, the Quran was real. These ultimate these defining battles in the history of Islam they were fought and won. Um, so you know, let these serve as reminders um, to how important this month truly is. Uh, so just to um, build from there, you know, continue to break your fast with your families and, you know, fulfill the Fadl and the Sunnah as much as you can. Um, pray the Tarawih with your family, Tahajjud and Qiyam, they can be taken advantage of in your homes. You know, continue to read the Quran, add on, and actually add on understanding the Tafsir. You know, seriously understand it, you know, um, what you're reading, you know, actually try to implement it in your life. Um, you know, let yourself be guided, use these as guidance from the words of Allah. Um, you know, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, um, Surah Al-Fal, Ayah number two, you know, that after following and actually implementing the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that your level of iman increases. You know, we must always strive to be our best, to be, uh, to be successful in this life. You know, it's never going to come chasing you. You must always make the effort, um, you know, to be successful. And right, kind of to conclude my, my answer here, you know, just to be reminded, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests the ones that he loves the most. Test them with hardship. So let's take this as an opportunity you know, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's make the most of this month. And, you know, and inshallah, um, we can do our part. As you know, like I mentioned, it's only coming around um, just once a year. So let's do our best here. I mean, I mean, inshallah, we could all take advantage of this special month of Ramadan. And, you know, when you do put it in that perspective of it only comes around once a year, I think, I think it kind of opens up a lot of our um, mindsets because sometimes we might take Ramadan for granted, you know. And uh, so inshallah, we could all take advantage of this month and uh, use it to get uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, but to shift the focus a little bit, um, I know Musab has been sitting in the background. He hasn't had much to say, but uh, we'll get to him now. Um, but, you know, especially during this time of this pandemic, um, you know, there's a lot of worry going around that um, there's people that are going to be in need of, um, you know, food and supplies. So, um, 
so what's your take on that? How could we help uh, people during this time of Ramadan? I think the first point to really understand is that during this time of Ramadan every year, we're usually placing a strong emphasis on generosity and helping those less fortunate. But we need to understand that these, there are a lot of people in need before Ramadan. And now with our COVID-19 pandemic, we have to realize people were in need before then. But now with our current situation, there are a lot more people in need. That's our reality. There are people, a lot more people who are unemployed. A lot more people have less access to food. And this is including both the Muslims and the non-Muslims. So just, and even just within our Muslim communities, we know with during Ramadan, a lot of people go to the masajid for iftar, for suhoor, they might depend on that for their food during Ramadan. So we need to do our part as Muslims to help out those who are less fortunate in our communities. So yeah, so, so, what, are some, so, so what are some practical ways um, that we could go out and help, these, help um, people in our Muslim communities, like dropping off food to their homes in permitted ways? Um, are those ways that we could help people? Yeah, definitely. If you know somebody personally who might need help, definitely dropping off food to their homes, trying to get groceries for them. That's all very helpful. If you if you personally can't help out, try to connect them with somebody who can help. If you don't know anybody who can help or you don't know anybody who you can help, you can always try talking to people at your local masjid, your local Islamic center. A lot of them have programs in place to help people out who are less fortunate. So just keep doing do your part and help out with the people who are less fortunate than you in your communities. But you also need to realize that as Muslims, we have our Umar on the globe who have been struggling. And the pandemic right now is not really helping helping out the situation at all. People are becoming more impoverished. And you realize that before and now during the pandemic, you see subhanAllah how just basic sustenance that we're so used to that's necessary for our daily lives, just food and water, it, is, it isn't even provided for our brothers and sisters around the world. So we can continue to give sadaqah, give zakat, drop off food, make dua as much as possible, but we need to properly read the situation at hand and realize these problems extend beyond just the locale we're in. We need to realize that as Muslims, we need to do our best to help the Muslims around the world. And yeah, no doubt that, uh, you know, our Muslim Ummah is struggling, not only due to, pan the, you know, this current pandemic that we're facing, but, you know, due to, you know, the lack of the resources around the Muslim world and the lack of unity um, and, and so many other reasons. So, you do bring up a good point of, you know, making sure that we remember people that are struggling, not only in times of difficulty, like how we're going through right now, but also um, in times of ease. Um, but before you go on, I just want to remind our viewers um, to, if you have you guys, if you guys have any questions, to just let us know in the comment section, um, in the comment section on the side. And um, inshallah, for those who are wondering, um, Dr. Jaleel will be addressing uh, some of the questions towards the end of it. We have one more question or a couple more questions that we'll get to and then inshallah uh, we could get to Dr. Jaleel. But uh, with the last uh, question before Dr. Jaleel, uh, I want to address this to Malik. And, um, you know, with the massages being closed, usually, um, you know, pay, uh, you know, giving... Uh, the, the Eid uh, Sadaqa um, is usually, uh, you know, we usually do it in the masjid. Um, but because the massages are closed, um, how could we go about, you know, giving charity and maximize this month of Ramadan? Uh, Malik, what do you say? Well, in this one, the, even with the coronavirus, and say we can't even go to the masjid, you can still pay zakat and uh, Eid Sadaqa normally. You can throw it through online means, so it does. So it, it, there's no exception for us to not pay the zakah or not to not pay the uh, the eight sadaqa. So in in, all, in reality, this question is pretty simple: is that you can throw it through online, and there's probably there's multiple methods in which you just get in contact with someone and from so probably kind of get in contact with someone from the masjid, from your local masjid, and they can take you through that process. Yeah, for sure, and more of like. Um... You can say a practical thing. I, don't, I forgot exactly what the app is called, but there are certain things where you could say, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could do this. Um, I don't know if you guys have Chase Quick Pay or something uh, like that, where you could set automatic payments to s some type of set up or charity. So some people want to make sure that they take advantage of like the last 10 days or, you know, all days of Ramadan. So you could automatically set, uh, set uh, specific donations at specific days. So. Um, yeah, we shouldn't worry too much about the massages being closed. We could still take advantage of um, uh, sadaqah opportunities. But um, at this time, 
uh, inshallah, we could introduce our Dr. Jalil uh, Abdul Adil. Uh, for those who have who have just heard about uh, Dr. Jalil, Dr. Jalil is a professor of clinical psychology. He is also a community activist. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Jalil. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. Doing good. So, 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 what's what's some of your take on uh, some of the things that we said? Do you have any uh, input? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First, I'd like to thank you all for doing your Dean One broadcast. It makes my heart inspired to see that the generation behind me is still working with me as I work with them. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, uh, one day you all not going to need me at the end. You can do your own summary because brothers be in charge. So I'm looking forward to that day. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> uh, Inshallah ta'ala, as I was thinking about this topic and as I was listening to you all, a few things did come to my mind. And Inshallah ta'ala, we'll make a few comments and then I'll turn it back over to you. One, as all of the panelists have said, we're in a worldwide pandemic but we can still benefit from this coming Ramadan, inshallah. We have to remember that the masjids may be closed, but alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, our hearts are open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of clinging to what we're used to and complaining about what we don't have, this broadcast has encouraged us to embrace this situation as part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. We can be thankful for what we do have and what we still can do. And we can be thankful for what we don't have and we can't do because it's all part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. We have many examples in Islamic history where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree was air quotes different from what the Muslims expected and it always worked out to the best. Sometimes it was even different from what the Prophet sallam, himself expected in this situation, but it was always according to the best plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi first tried to establish an Islamic state and build a comprehensive system. According to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tried for many years in the blessed city of Mecca, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead gave him something different. He opened up the city of Yathrib and Yathrib became the center of an entire Islamic civilization to the decree, to the degree that is still the center of our culture and our hearts to this day because it was a prophet city, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So even though it was something different, than what we expected. It was something different and in a different location than what the Muslims expected. It was still according to the best plan, which was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. Also, when the Muslims went and they made their hijrah to Yathrib, which became Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions used to pray toward Jerusalem, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed something different and he turned them to a new Qibla in Mecca. And it was the best plan, even though it was something different. Alhamdulillah. As it was mentioned earlier, we're celebrating also the time of Badr, the great victory of the Muslims. When it started out, the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions, radiallahu anhum, they were expecting a caravan from the Quraysh, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave them something different, which was a full-fledged Qurayshi army which came to fight them even though they were outnumbered and they did not have the equivalent number of arms. But it was according to the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it became a great victory for Islam that we remember this month. Even afterward, when the Prophet sallallahu and the companions radiallahu anhum, when they were at Hudaybiyah and they were coming back trying to make the pilgrimage and they were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Rasulullah sallallahu to make the treaty. There were some companions who felt like we expected something different. We expected to make a stand. We wanted to, to challenge the Quraysh. This was a humiliation. And it was something different. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, inna fatahna laka fatah mudin, mubin, that it was a clear victory. So it was something different, but it was something that was better. And there are many, many other examples in Islamic history where the Muslims, we expect one situation. Perhaps we even prefer a situation that we may know but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he decrees another situation. Some we know, something we may have no idea about, but ultimately it's better for us. So if we stick to the Quran and Sunnah and we struggle through the situation with patience, perseverance, 
and appreciation, inshallah, we'll get the benefits in this life and in the next. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah al Surah Shaq, Ka'udhu billahi mena shaitan al-rajim, bismillah rahman rahim fa inna ma'al usra yusra, inna ma'al usra yusra. So surely with every difficulty, there comes a relief. Surely with every difficulty, there comes a relief. And the Mufassirun have commented, the, the ones who make tafsir, they've commented, ma, not that. So it comes with it. When there's the adversity, the relief is already decreed right along with it, not after it was decreed right along with it as part of a comprehensive decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in closing, I would say we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and guide us to complete our fasting, our prayers, our Quran reading, and all the other rituals with the same patience and perseverance and appreciation that we knew before. And we don't know what to expect, but whatever is coming, we'll want to embrace it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help us come out of Ramadan where we're stronger, where we're better, where we're more able to rise up to the challenge of raising the flag of Islam as a beacon of light for humanity. And inshallah, whether it's a pandemic or it is not a pandemic, our hearts are always open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what building might be closed, no matter what opportunities may need to change, we will always, inshallah, embrace the opportunity because it's part of the divine decree. Amen. Amen, amen. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Jaid, for that. And uh, inshallah, we could all take ad advantage of this month of Ramadan. And, you know, I think it is important for all of us to recognize that, you know, this, we should look at this as an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, you know, to get closer to his deen. And inshallah, um, you know, we all have the ability to do that this Ramadan. Um, I don't think we have any questions from our YouTube and uh, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and um, end this podcast. But before we close, I just want to remind all of our viewers uh, to check back in shortly. Uh, we have a, um, a podcast coming out on our website called Moon Wars. Um, essentially, we address the battle uh, we often see at this time of the year about moon sightings um, and the start and end of Ramadan. So inshallah, uh, the podcast will provide us all with a better understanding and uh, clarify Clar uh, clarify matters on uh, moon sighting and uh, emphasize the importance of uh, unity in our ummah. Um, as always, we want to hear from our viewers. We want to hear from you guys. So uh, uh, please don't uh, stay, please don't refrain from uh, posting your comments on our website, on YouTube, under our videos. Um, our website is www.dean1.com. Uh, as well as subscribe to Dean One's YouTube channel, uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, and uh, most importantly, share this with uh, your friends and family uh, so we can all get a piece of the reward, inshallah. Just check in one more time if we have any YouTube questions. Uh, I don't think so, but that's okay. Inshallah, we will have some next time. Uh, but with that being said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today um, and uh, spending your time here with us. I want to ask one of our Hufad kindly to make our closing dua. Shams or Asad, one of you guys, uh, go ahead. Inshallah, I'll be doing it. <clears throat> Yalla, allow us to witness Ramadan and utilize it to the best of our abilities to seek your mercy and forgiveness. Yalla. Make this Ramadan better than last year with showering of your blessing in the Ummah. Ya Allah, lift the virus pandemic from all the world, Ya Allah. Remove the pain and suffering for our brothers and sisters and all of humanity, inshallah. Ya Allah, forgive our sins and inshallah, grant victory to the Ummah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yatikuna wa salamun alaykum wa sallam wa alhamdulillah. Amen. Zakallah khair, everybody once again for tuning in and to our viewers. Um, We'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Podcasts on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran tafsir, and sirah are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment, and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about IslamPodcast.com.